Hey there, Art Nerds. You saw it in my AliExpress watercolor haul. Today, we're taking a look at Supervision's newest super granulating watercolors. I was so excited for these. I was just like, oh, these seem amazing because many of them have not just two-way color splits, but three-way color splits. And I am all about those colors. So are these worth the hype that I've built up in my head? Do they compare to some of Supervision's other super granulating watercolors? And how do they compare against the Schmincke watercolors? Let's unbox, swatch, and field test to find out. Check out what we're taking a look at today. We are going to unbox, swatch, and probably field test the Supervision Layered Watercolors. And this is a totally different set from the other Supervision Layered Watercolors that we've looked at here in the past. What's really cool, in my opinion, about this set is that not only do we get two color spits, splits, two color splits, but in many instances we get three and four color splits, which as somebody who likes brush I am all about those colors. This isn't my first time reviewing Supervision's super granulating or layered watercolors. I've actually reviewed several of their sets and as a watercolor comic artist, I'm always looking for unusual watercolors that can add a little extra something to my watercolor comics. So what I'm going to be doing today is I am going to be comparing these new Supervision layered watercolors against some of the other Supervision watercolors that I've reviewed here in the past. So their half pans as well as their tubes. We're also going to try drying these out in half pans and seeing how well they reconstitute because that's an important part of how I work as a watercolor artist. I'm also going to compare these against some of the other layered or super granulating watercolors that I've tried in the past. So the Paul Rubens, the Paul Rubens Shiyun, the Schmincke, and the Daniel Smith. And we're going to be doing a field test where I draw however many tubes are in this. I draw that number of cute circular little tests like the ones you see here and these are kind of meant to replicate comic panels and what I really want from these kind of watercolors is I want atmospheric emotive comic panels a way to kind of shorthand the, those emotions those feelings or that environment without every panel having to be super loaded with drawings. So I'm taking a look at these watercolors today as a watercolor comic artist, which I think makes my reviews a little bit different and a little bit special here on YouTube. So if you're new here and you're not familiar with my work, I'm Becca Hilburn. I'm an illustrator and watercolor comic artist. So this is my Lilliputian living. And this is my baby, 7 Inch Kara, which is a long form ongoing watercolor comic. The first two volumes are available both as a web comic and in the Natto shop at natosoup.com slash shop. And you guys can see that I use a lot of watercolor, but I also have a lot of images where this sort of super granulation, this sort of layered watercolor effect could be really useful for conveying the environment, setting the tone, or conveying emotions. So having a good shorthand and also having these little mini field tests that will help me select colors efficiently so I can really get the vibe I'm going for is going to help make volume three not only more fun to read and more appealing but easier for me to paint. And I'm about to start painting chapter nine and I can't wait to introduce some of these super granulating watercolors into my comic work. So it would really mean the world to me. I would really, really love it if you guys would take the time to read it as a webcomic for free at 7inchcara.com or if you're a fan of the Dead Tree format like I am, I have a horde of books, some of them I've never even read yet, and you want to support a small business and an independent creator and a self-publishing artist, 
I would really love it if you'd buy it from the Natto shop at 7inchcara.com slash shop. And I'll have links for everything for you guys. Not only what we're reviewing today, but where you can get my comics and check out more of my work as well as relevant reviews down in the description below. So make sure you guys check that out. So you guys can kind of see what I'm looking for with these. And hopefully my little field tests, I think they do a good job kind of replicating what I'm looking for in comics and that'll help me effectively select what colors and to know which colors are going to be the most useful. So these are from my first couple rounds of reviewing Supervision Super Granulating Colors when they first came out. I was super excited about them. They just seem really cool and really fun. I have also reviewed, but I haven't yet field tested yet, their Mica watercolors. So this little set here, this is the Ocean Paradise set, but I have also reviewed the other sets in this series. So what's cool about these is they are layered granulating watercolors plus mica. And I was thinking either fairies or cherubs for this. It just kind of has that kind of vibe. I've also reviewed some of the Daniel Smith super granulating watercolors as well as some of the Paul Rubens Tubins super granulating watercolors. Let me select some of those out for you guys. So you guys can tell I'm pretty, pretty nutty over super granulating colors. I think they're just a lot of fun. I think they add a lot to your art and can make it just look more watercolory, you know? These are the two Shi Yun sets. So Shi Yun and Shi Neo 2.0. And I had a lot of fun with these as well. And the only reason I'm doing the little round format is I think it's cute and I have a round paper punch. So why not get fun little cookies? And most of these are done on cotton rag watercolor paper. These were done on the Maritini watercolor paper. And then I just wrapped up at the time of recording this and released my sh schminka. What a hard word to say. My schminka. Hordam Super Granulating Watercolor Review. And I swatched all 40 of the colors in their Super Granulating lineup. And then I selected a whopping 25 of them to field test further. So I was working on this review for a really long time. And I hope you guys will check it out. But I just want to share these with you guys to kind of give you an idea of where I'm coming from, what I'm looking for, what I like as a watercolor artist. Because I've come to discover that what I'm looking for in watercolors is pretty different from what other artists are looking for in watercolors. And I think understanding the bias and the viewpoint is really important when you're watching a review because you want to watch reviews from people who use the materials similarly, similarly to how you're going to use the materials. That, Or sometimes it's just fun to watch somebody who does things totally different from you so that you can pick up some new tricks or maybe just relax or maybe learn something without realizing you're learning something. So it's pretty clear I am a big fan of super granulating watercolors. So I'm really excited to unbox and swatch this set with you guys today. Since there is a lot I want to cover in today's unboxing swatch, I have broken this up into chapters to hopefully make it a little bit easier for you to find the information you're looking for. I'm also going to have an abbreviated show notes down in the description as well as a link to the full show notes down in the description. So that way, if you read better than you listen, and that's definitely me, I'll have those notes for you guys to make it handy. I will probably also have notes over on my Twitter after the video has been released. So if you're interested in following along with photos, you can find me at NattoSoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P. So to start off with, we have a beautifully packaged set of watercolors. That's something I have to hand it to Supervision. Their watercolors are very professionally packaged. This, I have a haul video where I showed you guys unwrapping this as well as some other things ordered from AliExpress. And this came separately. And I'll include a little snippet of me unwrapping it. It was very, very well packaged, perhaps over packaged. There's a bit of waste to that. So I don't have that here. And this came from Supervision Shop on AliExpress and I'll have links for you guys down in the description for that as well. Okay. 
I got a comment on how beautifully packaged supervision products typically are. When companies talk about gift packaging, this is the level that I want to see. It comes in a fairly sturdy, beautifully printed cardboard box. Inside is a sturdy foam, like, I don't know what to call it, foam liner, which is waste, but I am, because this is pretty compact for all these tubes, I'm gonna put all these tubes back into this and just use this to store it. So it is going to see continued use. And then these are 15 milliliter tubes and there are 15 of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tubes. So this was $115.58 on AliExpress with shipping that brings us to $126.50. So that's a hefty chunk of change if you're not sure if you're going to like a product. Also, uh, there are some light fast concerns with Supervision products in general. Other artists have reported noticing that the colors can shift in the tubes or that the colors shift and fade very quickly. That's one of the reasons I disclosed right at the top and show you guys my work that I'm a watercolor artist. I paint mainly for reproduction. Most of my work is seen online. And while I do sell originals, what I'm going to be using this for is mostly going to be on comic pages that are going to be kept in archival boxes when not being scanned or when not being brought to shows. So they're not gonna see a whole lot of sunlight. If I were to paint something with these that I was going to turn around and sell, I would disclose to the buyer that the paints used might be light fugitive because Sometimes people buy art for different reasons. Some people might be commissioning something that they're going to keep in a portfolio and it's of their D&D character. And while they love it and they enjoy it, it's not on display all the time. Or some people might have a bedroom that doesn't get a lot of natural light or the light isn't on in that bedroom frequently and they're looking for some art to put up or even a bathroom. So not everyone is going to display their art the same way, but by me disclosing that the products used might be light fugitive, that allows the customer to talk to their framer and to make some informed decisions before they even purchase the piece. So I feel that if you disclose the fugitivity of your materials at time of purchase, you have done your due diligence in that regard. And anybody who purchases or uses or sells alcohol marker pieces like things made with Copics or Prismacolors, those are also very light fugitive. And having done 10 years worth of convention commissions, I've done a lot of alcohol marker commissions. So I think as long as you set people's expectations accordingly, it's not such a big deal. But I do respect that other artists do find this to be a deal breaker. So while I have not had those issues, I have not noticed my tubes shifting, I have not noticed my color shifting, other artists have, and I think it's only fair to disclose that. And you may want to check out additional viewpoints in addition to mine before you purchase the set because 115 bucks is a lot of money and I would hate for you to spend all that money and get a product that you're not happy with. So we have 15 tubes laid out five in a row with three rows. On the front is a color number. This is 1738, as well as the name. This is red, name, red Navy, and then the name in Chinese. Over here, we have a little bit of pigment information. We have pigment CI name. This uses PR3 and PB36. Honestly, with supervision, they are probably also using a dye to get that really nice staining color, and that probably contributes to how fugitive some of these can be. So they may not disclose the dye at the time when they're disclosing the pigments. This is semi-transparent, or semi-opaque, I'm sorry, and it has a light fast level of five stars, and different companies do light fast differently, I would take this with a grain of salt. If you produce or purchase art made with these, I would be very careful on how you display them or how you store them. And this is series five. I am gonna go over all of the paint names, the pigment information, the light fast information, etc., while I'm swatching these. And you guys will also be able to find that down in the description below. Some things I noticed while transcribing these 
A lot of these utilize Jasper as part of their makeup. So up here in North America, Jasper is, it can be a multicolor stone, but I'm pretty familiar with it as like a reddish red orange stone. And I'm sure it varies based on the chemical and mineral content. So it'd be kind of interesting if they were utilizing different colors of Jasper in order to get some of these super granulations. And it would also be kind of interesting to see if they were doing that to kind of address some of the light fast issues that prior colors had or to get those additional color splits. So I'm going to try to keep an eye out and see what the Jasper actually does for these because I have not encountered Jasper in particular with watercolors before. Something else is that there are a few of these that are kind of reminiscent of colors that I've reviewed from Supervision in the past. Not exactly alike, but close enough that I would love to like compare them a little bit more closely and let you guys know if it's worth getting this set over that set, getting both sets, you know, basically whatever I can figure out. And if it's worth the height, price hike too, because so far as I'm aware, you can only get this set as this set, or rather you can only get the colors in this set as this set. I haven't seen them open stock yet. Whereas with Supervision, you can get the tubes as a set. Well, this is Supervision, but with the earlier Supervision set, you can get the tubes as a set, or you can get them as individual tubes, or you can get them as individual half pans, or you can get the half pan set. So there's a lot of like... <laughs> just different little categories that can get a little bit confusing. So hopefully in today's review, we can kind of clear some of that up. And also keep in mind, I am going to do a big super granulation showdown at the end of all this, where we talk about different brands and we talk about different properties and we talk about different concerns and we definitely talk about price and availability. So I'm not intending to answer every question you might have today, just some of the ones that are coming to mind that are easy for me to kind of figure out while we're doing this. So. Next, it's time to do the swatch test. And we are going to be doing our swatch test on a big old piece of Blick watercolor paper. This is their Cotton Rag Coal Press. We're gonna be using their 10 by 14 block today. And I just wanna take a moment to thank my awesome patrons because not only do I use Patreon funds to buy things like this to review for you guys, but I also use it to purchase replenishment for consumables that get used up when I'm doing these kind of reviews. So I'm not constantly poaching from my illustration stash. So I wanna thank my patrons so much for their support because these kind of reviews and my tutorials would just not be feasible without them. If you like what I do and you wanna help me continue to do it, you can join me at patreon.com slash natosoup. But even if you can't afford to help support the work I'm doing financially, another way you can help support what I'm doing is by clicking that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification and letting YouTube know that you wanna see more content from me. And of course, I always love hearing from you guys. So giving me a shout out down in the comments also means a lot to me. I don't always respond to my comments, but I do try to read them and they mean so much. So thank you guys. So I am going to go grab, actually what I want to do first is I'm going to end up half pan testing these anyway. So I am going to go grab a palette for these. We're going to squeeze them into the palette and we're going to swatch from there. The colors in this set are 1738 Red and Navy, Pigment CI name PR3, PB36, it is semi-opaque, 5 stars of light fastness, and it is series 5, 1739 Purple Brown, Pigment CI name PV23, with Jasper, it is semi-opaque with 5 stars of light fastness, it is series 4, Blue Brown 1740, Pigment name PB17, and Jasper, it is semi-opaque, five stars of light fastness. It is also series four. Blue Violet, 1742, pigment CI name PB36, PV23, PR122, semi-opaque with four, five stars of light fastness, and it is series five. Blue Orange, 1741, pigment CI name PB36, 
P013. It is semi-opaque with five stars of light fastness and it is series five. Green Violet 1743. Pigment CI name PG7, PV15. It is semi-opaque with five stars of light fastness and it is series four. Red Violet 1744. Pigment CI name PR3, PV15. PV15 PY3. It is semi opaque with four stars of light fastness and it is series four. Spring Bud 1745. Pigment CI name PB36 PY1. It is semi opaque with five stars of light fastness and it is series five. Rubia Indigo 1746. It is pigment CI name PB36, PR146, and PV15. It is semi-opaque with five stars of light fastness. It is series four. Rubia Purple, 1747. Pigment CI name PB36, PR3, PV17. It is semi-opaque with five stars of light fastness, and it is series four. And then finally, we have Gold Brown, 1748. Pigment CI name PY3 and Jasper. It is semi opaque with five stars of light fastness. It is series four. West Lake 1749. Pigment CI name PV23, PB36. It is semi opaque with five stars of light fastness. It is series five. Midnight Moon 1750. Pigment CI name PG50, PB36, PR122. It is semi opaque. It is five stars of light fastness and it is series. 5. Lotus Leaf, 1751. It is pigment CI name PG7, PB29. It is semi-opaque, five stars of light fastness, and it is series 2. And finally, we have Devil's Kiss, 1752. Pigment CI name PV19 and Jasper. It is semi-opaque with five stars of light fastness, and it is series 4. I filled 15 half pans and there was no gross separation, no gum Arabic, everything was still pretty cleanly mixed. Now, I did order these, I think pretty shortly after they were, were released. Like I saw, I, I troll AliExpress pretty frequently looking for finds. I don't always buy them immediately, but I'm always like kind of aware of them, right? And then uh, it took a couple weeks for me to finally pull the trigger and purchase this set. And uh, I basically am swatching it like two days after I got it. So I would say it hasn't been sitting on this shelf super long. So it hasn't had a chance to like really separate out. But something I had noticed about AliExpress watercolors in the past, just different brands of tube watercolors, is that generally they <laughs> tend to explode when you uncap them because it seems like maybe they were shipped via air and they were pressurized and then, you know, all that pressure is still in the tube. That wasn't really a problem with these, although they did take longer to arrive than some of the other watercolors I've ordered. But I just thought I'd point that out because I do know some other artists have had problems problems with watercolors having gross separation. I've had problems with watercolors having gross separation and I think it's just worth mentioning when it doesn't happen. So now that we've got everything in half pans, I'm going to go ahead and do two sets of swatches. I'm going to do one set today while these are still wet and fresh. I'm going to let these dry out over several days, come back and re-swatch them. And ideally what we're looking for between the two sets of swatches is either very little change or an improvement. I've actually noticed that super granulating watercolors, at least for me, tend to perform a lot better after they've been dried out a little bit. You get way more interesting color splits. It's much more saturated. So that's what I'm going to be kind of looking at. I expect them to handle better after they've dried out because in my experience, these kinds of watercolors tend to handle better, at least for me, after they've dried out. But I want to do both kinds of swatching for you guys. Also, we're going to be looking to see if these even reconstitute. 
generally that's not an issue but every now and then I get a tube watercolor that once it's dried out it's dead it's gone there is no calling it back from the grave and that's something to be aware of too because if you're like me and you prefer to work from half pans or dried watercolors you need to know if you're wasting your money on that particular tube or if it's best only used when fresh so I'm gonna go grab that Blick Studio paper and we're gonna get to swatching if you haven't watched my super granulation reviews before, I actually swatch these differently than I swatch regular watercolors. I'm not really looking for the same kind of properties that I'm looking for when I swatch what regular watercolors. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down a field of water and dip some of the color in and really encourage it to granulate out so we can see those color splits. And then I'll probably do a mass tone swatch on the sides rather than doing like opacity testing or looking for granulation or doing lift testing or any of that because I handle these differently than I handle my regular watercolors and these are usually a different use case entirely for me so I have different expectations. The half pans were easily filled. There were no explosions, no separation, no gross smells, no gum Arabic separation, so all good. Swatching while the paints are still fresh. The colors are pretty, but they are very light, and I'm hoping that allowing them to dry will help them to become more saturated and allow for more color impact. So as you guys can see, I'm putting down a wash of water. Into that, I am dipping some of our pigments and allowing it to diffuse, and then on the side, I am and making a mass tone swatch. I'm a little bit disappointed at how light some of these swatches are. I was really hoping for more color intensity, but that leaves room for if they dry, for them to re-swatch more saturated and impress me. I did have some trouble, not necessarily activating them because they were wet, but more just getting any color off of them. And that's typically not a problem with dried half pans, at least the ones that'll reactivate. So I am hopeful that I'll like these a lot better after they've had a chance to dry. They are pretty as they are. We are getting some really pretty splits. It's just they're not as intense or as saturated as I was kind of hoping for. So I am going to let these dry for a few days. Um, basically, it kind of varies. I live in Southeast Louisiana. It's super humid. It has been raining every day here. So basically, when the surface is completely dry and not tacky and it's either hard or it only depresses just a little bit rather than a skin on the surface, as you can see, some of them are already getting a bit of a skin on the surface. That's when it's uh, dried enough for me to feel like I could re-swatch it. Um, so it's going to take however many days it takes. It has been a week. These watercolors are very dry, which is good because that allows us to really test how resoluble these are. So this is what our initial swatches from wet look like. I'm really hoping that we're going to see better saturation of color since these have had a chance to kind of evaporate and we're not going to be contending with like loose binder. To start, I'm going to give them just a little spritz to allow the colors to kind of reactivate, to soak up some of that water and release some of those pigments. I allowed these to dry out for about a week and I started swatching them and I didn't necessarily notice an improvement but I did notice that some colors are harder to activate than they seem to be straight from the tubes and this is where something we're going to explore more while we're doing the field test so stay tuned for that.
right, so I didn't notice a marked improvement in how these handled after a week of drying, which is kind of unusual because generally I find these kind of super granulating watercolors become a little easier and a little more saturated to deal with. Some of them were actually a lot harder to get any kind of color up, but I think they were probably a challenge to get any kind of color up from the get-go. This set is a little bit more, so other artists on YouTube have complained about having some issues with Supervision watercolors, particularly the prior super granulating set, the one that I really liked. I didn't have those issues with that set, but I can kind of see where they're coming from. I can kind of see what they're talking about with this set, which is concerning because I jumped on this bandwagon basically as early as I could. So if there's problems this early in production, it might just be a, a systemic problem. But they weren't, none of them were so bad that I didn't enjoy using them or I found them to be unusable. I'm just saying I did have some reactivation issues. Maybe I should have let the water sit on them for longer and that I could see where other artists are coming from. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little swatch map for these and then we can move on to the field test. So while swatching these again for the palette map, I really allowed the water to sit on there and soak in. And I feel like these benefit from a longer activation time. I've time-lapsed the sketching and inking portions of the field test as much as possible just to kind of condense it down so we're not here for three hours rather than an hour and 15 minutes. If you want to see these slow down a little bit, they're still pretty sped up. I did share them over on my TikTok, Natto Soup, as well as in my YouTube shorts. So you can check them out. They should be available Either that or I will, I have yet to share them. I think I'm sharing the Schmincke ones currently and then the Supervision ones. So it kind of depends on when I release this. But these were all sketched on rounds that were punched out of the Blick Studio cotton rag watercolor paper. So the same paper that I swatched on and the same paper that I've been moving towards doing the super granulating field tests on since I can't find the Maritini rounds anymore. I'm making my own. These are 100% cotton rather than being a mixed fiber paper like the Maritini rounds were, but otherwise they handle pretty similarly and they can take a lot of water and they can take a lot of working, which should be beneficial for these sort of super granulating watercolors. So I'm sketching this in with a plain HB mechanical pencil. It's the Pentel Icy and I put a different grip on it because I ruined the original grip from overuse. I seriously am getting my money's worth out of this very cheap mechanical pencil. This is the same one I've had for a really long time and it's probably time for me to buy a new one, but dang it, I'm gonna hold on to it. So I am inking these with the Tombow Fure Noske brush pin in black. And this just has a slightly firmer brush pin than the Sakura Pigma FB. I like both of them, but I find that on this paper at this size, the Tombow Furunosuke works quite well but both of them are alcohol marker safe and waterproof brush pins and the nice thing about the Furunosuke is it comes in a variety of colors and I wish I wish Tombow would add even more colors to that lineup because I would buy them in a heartbeat so for these field tests I do themed sets and for this set I'm doing different times of the day for Kara so we're kind of following my character Kara through just different daily activities from getting up to brushing her teeth to getting dressed to the sort of stuff that she just does throughout her day. And this was actually one of my favorite themed sets to do. I think this one turned out 
really cute. I had the most fun drawing it. I had the most fun inking it. So it's a set that I really enjoyed doing. I've been scanning them and I'm still trying to decide what to do with these. I think these might make for really cute stickers. Let me know what you guys want to see. Would you like these as stickers? Would you use these as stickers? I mean, I would, but I'm also biased. This is my girl. If you're not familiar with my work, this is the main character of my comic, Seven Inch Kara. It's about a seven inch tall girl named Kara who discovers a huge family secret and then sets out on a big adventure to find out the truth behind all of it. And you can read it as a webcomic at 7inchkara.com or if you're a fan of the dead tree format or you just want to support an independent creator, you like the work that I do and you'd like for me to continue to be able to do it, you can buy your own copy at 7inchkara.com slash shop or natosoup.com slash shop. They all kind of go to the same place. So it doesn't really matter. Whatever is easiest for you. And of course, I will have links for you guys down in the description below, as well as my full show notes that includes the tube names and the pigment information, everything that I have available to me at this time. And I want to also say a big thank you to my patrons because it's their support on Patreon that allows me to be able to afford sets like the one we're taking a look at today. I paid $115 on AliExpress for this set. And if it weren't for my Patreons, I wouldn't be able to do these kinds of reviews. They are my sponsor and I really do appreciate their support. So thank you guys so much. So I wanted to follow Kara up throughout her day and that includes includes being homeschooled, it includes her going out on adventure, it includes her doing some household chores, it includes her doing some schoolwork and cooking dinner and spending time with Dusty and of course going to bed. And I think you guys can probably see why this is one of my favorite sets. It just turned out really cute. I, I like all of the themed sets, but this one is my favorite. It is best theme. It is best girl and best theme. So the trick with these rounds is that I try to get them done as quickly as possible, which generally means I can complete three per day. That's usually the goal I'm aiming for, but if it's a busier day, I may not be able to do that. It really kind of just depends. And this has been time-lapsed horrifically. It has been crunched so many times to save you guys time. And it still took, it's still five minutes of time, right? So um, each one of these took about five minutes to sketch, maybe up to eight minutes to ink. Um, and I let the ink sit on it until I finished all 15 of these. And I tried to do three per day. So that's what, five days, three, you guys do the math. And then I erase them after they've had a chance for the inks to really cure. And then I scan those because one day I will finally have enough inks to release a Kara coloring book like I promised my amazing supporters on Kickstarter. I have been working on it, guys. I have not forgotten. So this is what the finished and cleaned up adorable little rounds look like. And I promise the coloring book is not going to be just Kara rounds. I just thought those would be kind of a fun bonus little extra. So we have 15 of these because we have 15 supervision colors to swatch today. If you're curious about how this supervision set compares against the other super granulating watercolors that I've reviewed on the channel, I am currently working on a big showdown where I compare them all. So keep an eye out for that. And I'll try to give you guys advice on which which brands are best, which colors are best, which use cases might be best for you. Basically all the information that you might wanna know about super granulating watercolors, hopefully I'll have that for you guys. So I'm going to start by painting the backgrounds because these are a test to see how well they'll work as kind of backgrounds for panels in my comic. So I pre-activated everything and I'm taping it down either using artist tape or using empty washi tape, applying a bunch of water and then adding in my paint and allowing it to dry fully before I remove it. And then I put it under some weights and some paper, like sandwich it in so that it can dry flat. And one thing I did notice is that some of these really take a lot of scrubbing and a little bit of reapplication to get the color intensity that you might want. Now, if you're using this in a more painterly setting, right? You're gonna be using this more of a mass tone or you may be mixing it with other colors or you may be painting layers on top of it. 
I feel like these are one of the weaker supervision sets. Um, they just don't activate as much. You don't get as much color. You don't get as much of a striking difference as some of the other supervision sets. But I still found it to be really useful. I still really like the colors. I think it's going to work for what I want it for, which is comic backgrounds. So I'm not, I'm a little disappointed because I've had good experiences with Supervision watercolors for the most part. I actually did not like their studio watercolors all that much. And I have a review here on the channel if you're curious about their more normal watercolors. But in general, I've really enjoyed Supervision's weirdness. I appreciate what they're bringing to the table. And while what they make isn't for everyone, I've been having a lot of fun with it. But um, as I stated, these have some of the problems that other artists have mentioned some of the other supervision sets having like I can see where they're coming from with some of these problems in this set. I probably mentioned this prior. These don't disclose the use of any dyes, but I would put money that they are using dyes for some of those more staining colors to get that really striking super granulation effect. When we looked at the Schmincke watercolors, we didn't really get that kind of staining color in most of our colors the way we do with the supervision ones. And that's because the Schmincke colors aren't using dye based colors to achieve that kind of super granulating effect. But supervision is, which means it is not going to be light fast. So if you're painting to sell, if you're painting to display, if you're painting for a gallery setting, you might not want to use these. But if you're like me and you're painting for reproduction, so maybe you're going to use, you're going to scan the art and then use it for postcards, or you're going to scan the art and it's going to be used in a comic, or you're going to scan the art and it's going to be used in stickers. It's really not as big a deal for us because if we do sell the original, we're going to disclose, hopefully, right? We're going to disclose that these might not be light fast, so you might want to be very careful in how you display them and they may fade over time. But also, we're not really painting these or making things with these to sell that. We're painting with these to make to scan the thing and then sell the thing we scanned, if that makes sense. So I really like disclosing that. I think it's really important. I, I think it's due diligence and I'm trying to be as honest with you guys as possible about these because since my opinion and my use case differs so much from the other artists who are using these, I think it's only fair to let you guys know that so that you guys can make an informed decision. I have to admit though, I was kind of disappointed that the swatches on the back of the box and the swatches on the listing on AliExpress are way more impressive than what I felt like the paints were able to do for me. I felt like I was getting more of those kind of, or I felt like the box showed more of those like tri-color splits and I didn't really see as much of that as I really wanted to. What I really want is I want brusho like effects with these things without the mess and having to mask things off the way I would with brusho. Just give me that. I want like Pop Rocks magic. So I'm painting these in batch partially because it means I can get it done a lot faster and partially because when I paint comic pages I paint them in batch although not quite like this. You are going to see my face in the shot sometimes. Sometimes I get in between the camera. Hopefully that's not too distracting for you guys but I did want to recreate how I paint comic pages pretty closely. So usually when I'm painting comic pages I'm painting on Canson Montval which is a cellulose paper but it's a nicer cellulose paper and it's the same paper I've been using for 7 inch Kara since chapter 2. So I'm very familiar with Montval for my comic pages and usually I would pencil and stretch my comic pages. I wouldn't have inked art and I wouldn't just tape the cookies down on the back. There would be a blue tape border around it to hold it in place. But those are really the major differences. This kind of gives me an idea of how these paints might look as a panel in a comic page. That's why it features just one character because I really want to be able to utilize these for more emotive panels, for panels that have maybe a strong emotion or a strong feeling just as a time-saving measure but also to bring in some visual interest and to make them fun to look at. To me that's where super granulating watercolors are just the most exciting is for comic 
panel effects or to, you know, paint magic, basically. That's the other big thing I use super granulating watercolors for is when I'm painting magic effects, like glow effects, I really like using the super granulating watercolors. And if you guys watch my Stash Buster tutorial series, I pull out the super grands pretty frequently because it's a really easy way to get a lot of impact without having to do a lot of work or having to have a lot of talent. And that's something else that I find is really inviting about these these and other super granulating watercolors that have a multicolor split, especially when the colors are kind of wild, it really does a lot of the work for you. It brings in a lot of texture. It brings in a lot of visual interest. And it's one fewer thing you have to be thinking about while you paint. Now, I have not tried painting a straightforward, well, I kind of have and I kind of haven't. So I use these for special effects in regular watercolor illustrations illustration. So I have actually used these with masking fluid and I have painted on top of them to a limited degree, but I haven't tried to do like a landscape with them and I haven't tried to use them when painting clothing, something like that. So it would be interesting to challenge myself to do that. I'm probably not going to do it before I do the uh, showdown, but I should challenge myself to do that because it, it actually makes me kind of nervous thinking about it. And it's like, you know what? That could be a really good test. I might make some really ugly art with it. It might totally fall apart. Or I might really fall in love with utilizing it that way. I'm so sorry that I'm inserting myself in between the camera and you guys. So this is another segment that has been time lapse. It has been sped up significantly. Mostly because this element of watercolor painting isn't really why you guys are watching this review. I wanted to include it because I'm a completionist and I thought you guys might enjoy seeing it, but it's not really meant to be a tutorial. I'm not really going to walk you guys through my watercolor process for this. I have other videos where I do that and I do it much better. So I figure you guys should just watch those. So the whole allure of painting in batch is basically we paint all the skin tones at one time and we all de we develop them all to the same level. We paint all the shadow colors on the skin tones, all the blushes at the same time. We do the hair all at the same time. So it does take a while. I think this took like three or four days for me to paint, but I was able to paint 15 mini paintings in that span of time. This is not only how I do my comic pages, but it's also how I used to do my convention commissions. If I had watercolor commissions, I would have a bunch of them spread out in front of me and I would do all of the skin tones and all of the backgrounds at one time and then I would go back and I would paint in the individual details and that's sort of I say mass production but it's still workshopping is really a better term for it because it's still not done at a level of mass production that is truly mass production but it is being done in batch and it is being done that way because it allowed me to offer my watercolors at a lower price point and it allowed me to utilize the same batches of paint for multiple pieces. So it was more economical for me and I could pass that along to my customers. While painting these, I was keeping an eye out for problems. I wanted to see if the supervision colors would reactivate and bleed into my existing colors, which for darker colors isn't really an issue, but let's say you have a dark background and a light skin tone. You really don't want those colors bleeding into the light skin tone unless you did that on purpose. You want it to be intentional. Fortunately, that has never been a problem with any of the super granulating watercolors that I've tried so far. I'm actually going to go back and swat, well, do field tests for my Daniel Smith super granulating colors and the Van Gogh Dusk colors, just for completionist sake. Uh, but I've used the Daniel Smith super granulating colors a lot. I've used them for years and it hasn't been a problem. So I'm not expecting any problems. It's just that I'm a big nerd and I want all the cookies so that I can have them all lined up in front of me and I can say I did all of them. See, I never got into Pokemon as a kid, but I do definitely have a gotta catch them all sort of streak in me. So now that we've got the skin tone and the hair established, we can start working on some of the more 
unique things. Now, since this follows Kara throughout her day, there's basically going to be two sets of colors when it comes to the clothes. We're gonna have the color we used for her t-shirt, the shirt that she was sleeping in, and then the shirt, the color that we're gonna use for her sweater. So this batch of batch painting actually went a lot faster because a lot of the colors could be reused. And to paint this, I'm using the same palette that I use when I'm painting regular comic pages and most of my standalone illustrations. I'm using my Daily Driver watercolor palette, which is a collection, it's a smorgasbord, it's an amalgamation of all of my favorite professional grade watercolors. So a bunch of different brands. Brands. This is why no brand is ever going to sponsor me as I can't just stick with one brand. I have to pick the best from each brand and then use the heck out of them. And that's what my daily driver palette is. And it's a bunch of half pans that have been filled from tubes. I find that to be an economical way for me to paint. I used to go out of my way to buy the Winsor & Newton half pans because those are supposed to be specially formulated for rewettability. But I haven't encountered too many tube dried half pans that don't reactivate. Daniel Smith's Mayan Blue is, it basically just turns to like dried clay because it is clay. When it dries out, it just becomes dried clay. So that's one that doesn't reactivate, but most watercolors do. And I don't even really have too big a problem with the honey base ones drying enough that I can have it in a palette. They do stay kind of sticky. So you wanna be kind of picky about what kind of palette and what kind of palette setup you have them in. But even though I live in Louisiana and Louisiana is incredibly humid and watercolors, especially professional grade watercolors, do use humectants that are very hydrophilic that absorb atmospheric moisture, hasn't really been a problem for me. Maybe it's cause I run my AC at full tilt like 90% of the year, like most Louisianians. I do have to admit, sometimes when I'm re-watching the footage from these kinds of field tests, like the multiple mini watercolor painting field tests that I seem to love doing, I kind of wonder if I've like lost my mind a little bit because this is a lot of work just to test something out. And I mean, it's useful info for me. Hopefully it's useful info for you guys. And I do enjoy doing it, but I'm like, wow, I, I really went all out on this. And I think one of the reasons I do it this way is because I don't necessarily want to commit these colors to a page until I've had a chance to really test them out and make sure they're going to do what I want them to do. Because on the Mont Vol, it can be a lot harder to correct mistakes and I may just have to accept it and work with it. So doing a pretest like this really helps me kind of troubleshoot it and figure out the weak areas and share that information with you guys before I've committed to using it on a comic page.
So since I have so many of these to paint, I'm gonna use Grise and do a little bit of underpainting for the shadows. That's gonna save me a lot of time later on. I found that establishing my shadows and getting those kind of tints in early while I can do it in monochrome is so much quicker than trying to glaze it on top of and it possibly sloughing off my paper or sloughing off the prior layers of paints if I try to apply it later on. So for me, that's a time-saving technique that I've picked up from doing these kinds of batch paintings, these sort of batch illustrations that's definitely useful in my comic technique. And if you guys are interested in learning how to make your own comics or learning how to make watercolor comics or learning how to use watercolor for your comics, I've got you covered on all accounts. I've got a great making comics and zines playlist that has a bunch of drawing tutorials in it. It's got a bunch of comic craft tutorials in it and it really walks you through the process of making comics or making zines. And no, they're not the same thing, but they do utilize a lot of the same techniques. While a zine isn't necessarily a comic, a comic can be in a zine. So you might want to check that out. It's one of my favorite playlists. And I have this overview where I go through a bunch of different zines I've collected by going to cons and buying them from other artists over the years. That's one of my most popular videos. So, hey, you know, 21K can't be that wrong. So maybe you guys should check it out. I also have my watercolor basics playlist, which is all about painting watercolor comics. And it kind of follows me working on, I think it's chapter six of Seven Inch Kara. So I'm actually working on my comic and sharing that process with you guys in that playlist. And then I've got a bunch of just how to watercolor playlists here on the channel from quick and easy watercolor to intro to watercolor to my watercolor crash course, which is my newest how to watercolor series that I've shared during World Watercolor Month this year, so 2022, that I think you guys will really enjoy. And I go back and I answer some of the things that I've noticed weren't answered in some of my prior videos, or I've had a chance to explore it more, or I've had a chance to do new demos for it. So hopefully you guys will check out my watercolor crash course if you're interested in watercolor and you're interested in learning how to watercolor yourself. So for these, I haven't really been pulling out the watercolor pencils to add the final details, but I do use white gouache just to add in some highlights here and there. If these were watercolor comic pages, I would definitely pull out the watercolor pencils if I felt like they were necessary, but I don't really feel like these particularly need them, so I'm not going to pull them out. I think these turned out very cute. I did have some frustrations with the Supervision's newest layered watercolors. They weren't quite as as intense as I wanted and the color shifts where it granulates out into multiple different colors just wasn't as striking. I really want to challenge one of these watercolor companies to make watercolors with super granulating properties that are just like wild. I'm talking Christmas green and a bright red, bright blue or an ultramarine blue and a pyrrole orange. I want some Venetian red in there and a phthalo blue. Give me your crazy color splits because that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm craving. We have a lot of more mild mannered colored splits that make more sense if you're doing like a straightforward illustration, but I want your crazy colors. I want your wildness. Give me that. Give me some brush realness here. So I have 
15 of these cookies because there were 15 tubes in the box. We're going to take a look at them and you guys can see they're just the, the color splits are just not that exciting. And I'm not really sure what the Jasper is doing in particular with this set. There are a lot of super granulating watercolors on the market right now. And frankly, I'm here for it. But I really want someone to go wild with these. I've reviewed quite a few different super granulating brands because I am just seeking that brusho dopamine hit of beautiful fireworks explosions of colors. And I haven't quite hit what I'm looking for yet. And I don't really understand why. So if you know of a company or an individual who's making super granulating watercolors that deliver on those wild, crazy color splits, greens with oranges with pinks, purples with reds with teals, let me know down in the comments below. I am familiar, I have seen the Martini Super Granulating Watercolors, and while I would like to review those, I don't have any plans to review those or purchase those myself anytime in the future. But if you have a set of the Martini and you'd be willing to swap some half pans with me, I could send you some of the Supervision and you could send me some of the Martini. I would love that. You can get a hold of me through the paint box, my art-centric Discord server. I'll have a link down in the comments below as well as you know the full show notes and the materials that I've used basically everything you need because that could be a great way for us to help each other and for us to get to play with watercolors that we might otherwise never get a chance to play with and as a completionist I would just love it because then I could say I reviewed basically all of the super granulating watercolors minus some of the handmade ones that are on the market and that just like ticks that little box in my brain that's like happiness which is ridiculous because that's not true happiness, but whatever. So these weren't really that standout to me compared to some of the other Supervision watercolors that I've reviewed. I started to notice some of the same problems that some of the other artists here on YouTube have had with these. I still think they're fun and it'll be interesting to see if the half pans are able to reconstitute later on when I need them for the showdown. So keep an eye out for that. Stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification to let YouTube know that you want to see that showdown when that showdown comes out. If you have made it this far, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I know this was a longer one, but I kind of like the longer ones. It gives me a chance to really talk to you guys. It gives us a chance to really explore the products. And as a viewer, I happen to like longer YouTube videos myself. Sometimes I'll put them on when I'm trying to like lying down and relax for the evening. And if I fall asleep midway, which does happen, I'll just kind of pick up where I left off the next night. And I also really like putting longer videos on while I'm working because it can get kind of lonely facing a wall with a camera pointed down recording and other people's YouTube content kind of provides company while I'm working. So hopefully I could be that company for you guys today. So what did I think of this newest set of Supervision watercolors? Well, as you guys know, I prefer to work from half pans and I'm going to open the half pans that I decanted them in and hopefully not spill them everywhere. And I'm gonna move my field test so that you guys can see my initial swatches. I have to say, I am a little bit disappointed in that my swatches, both the from the tube and the half pan, are not nearly as saturated as what they show on the back of the package. These look much more saturated. So for the field test, I really wanted to be able to capture and emulate that. So sometimes I had to go in and really reactivate the paint several times, apply several layers, just, just to try to capture that saturation and that layered watercolor look. And that's something I didn't necessarily have a problem with with the other Supervision Super Granulating watercolors that I've reviewed for you guys, or some of the other Super Granulating watercolors that I've checked out here on the channel. So I am working on a big Super Granulation showdown. I'm going to make little field test cookies for some of the other paints that I use all the time. 
but I don't, I haven't necessarily field tested them individually. So mostly the Daniel Smith and the Van Gogh paint. So I still need to do that. And then we'll have probably somewhere close to a hundred of these cookies that we can actually use as a point of comparison. So if you want to know which super granulating watercolors are best for you, which is the best bang for your buck, and if the Schmincke watercolors are really worth that higher price tag, I hope you guys will keep an eye out for that. So my thoughts on these are kind of conflicting. The set was around $110 for 15 tubes, so around ish $8 a tube, I'm sure someone in the comments can figure out exactly how much each tube was. So they're not as expensive as Schmincke or Daniel Smith, but you do have to order them at least for the time being from AliExpress. I've noticed a lot of Supervision products have been getting listed on Amazon, so I am sure they will be available on Amazon at some point, which will increase their accessibility. This is the first time I could kind of see what some of the other watercolor artists who don't like the Supervision Super Granulated super granulating paints I could see what they were talking about these did not as activate as easily or as readily as some of the other ones and the color splits were not as exciting as they were on the back of the box I feel like in this instance they might have over promised and under delivered a little bit it might be a formulation problem they might not be as shelf stable but the other concern with that is I ordered these a month after I saw that they'd been released I had to wait for the patreon funds to come in so that I could order them and I, so I didn't wait a, a long time. It wasn't like two years had passed. This is an old stock. There's no reason why they should not be performing well. They're still within a year of manufacturing date unless there's something I'm missing. So that is kind of a concern. And it will be interesting to see how these hold up over time. And if my tubes develop some of the problems that some of the other YouTube artists have noticed with their other supervision super granulating tubes. So I guess I will have to fill you guys in as I find that out. But it definitely gives me pause and it makes me a little hesitant to be able to recommend this particular set. Now um, the half the the supervision half pan set I find that to be kind of just like a good all-rounder but one of the concerns with any of these supervision super granulating colors is they do use dyes to get a lot of these color splits that's how you get the staining color and dyes are going to be very light fugitive so if you paint for display if you paint to sell your work it may cause problems now I paint for a variety of reasons, but the reason I was excited about these is I thought they would work well as comic panel backgrounds, and I still feel that way. The dye doesn't necessarily deter that because my end use case is scanning them, color correcting them a bit, lettering them, and then releasing them as a web comic and as physical books. And if you're interested in checking out my work and getting kind of a feel for what I'm talking about, or if you just like comics, you can read 7 Inch Kara at 7inchkara.com. And I'll tell you a little bit about the comic itself here. 7 Inch Kara is a watercolor comic that follows the adventures of Tiny Kara, a 7 inch tall Lilliputian girl who discovers a huge family secret and seeks out the truth behind a massive mystery. Along the way, she makes friends with giants and rides kittens. You can read 7 Inch Kara at 7inchkara.com and Volume 1 and Volume 2 are both available in the Netto Shop. I hope you guys will check it out and let me know what you think. If you enjoy it, you can order your own copies of Volume 1 and Volume 2 through the Natto Shop, or you can fill out a library request form at your local library and let them know that you would love it if they would carry this book. And that doesn't cost you anything. I still see a sale and it helps introduce the book to new readers. So it's a wonderful way to help encourage me to keep making comics. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. But that's my use case for these is I wanted more emotive, atmospheric, moody panels. And I felt like more super granulating watercolors could really help me push that. So I'm looking forward to playing around with these and some of the other super granulating watercolors I've purchased this year, like the Shiyun sets the Schmincke sets, the Daniel Smith super granulating watercolors, and the other Supervision super granulating watercolors. I'm looking forward to using those in my comic work from here on out and letting you guys know how I feel about that. So 
this is a very specific use case. I was hoping for more intense color, more intense color splits, more saturation, and they just kind of fell flat for that. I was also hoping for more multicolor splits. I'm looking down at my swatches and I'm not really seeing the multicolor splits that I saw on the back of the box. And I'm sorry, my table is very wobbly. Put my toe under there and hopefully I don't smash it like a macadamia nut. But um, I'm, some of these really look like, like this one here, it looks like it's got purple, orange, and red. And I thought that looked really cool. Um, this one looked like it had a couple different browns in it. This one looks like it's got two purples and a blue. So some of these looked like they really had a lot more going on than what we see here. And I don't know why we can't have brusho like multicolor color explosions. It would just be a difference of selecting a variety of pigments that granulate at different particle sizes. And that would give you even just like ultramarine blue, a bright staining orange, like a pyrrole orange, and PBK11 would start moving you in that direction. So I'd like to challenge more companies to try this out and try to make it happen because obviously you know you'll probably get my money. So there is one more set that, or one more brand that does super super granulating colors that I haven't reviewed yet. That's Martini. Uh, it is not easily accessible where I live in the US and I'd have to order it from AliExpress, which usually isn't a problem for me, but I have already purchased so many super granulating sets. And the Martini set is very similar, in my opinion, color-wise to the Shi Yun set that I'm kind of iffy about. Like I'm very curious about it. It looks interesting. They're named after planets and I'm kind of a sucker for that. As both a Pisces and a fan of Sailor Moon, there's just something about that that really speaks to me. But it's hard for me to justify paying that much money to make sure that I get the actual product. I don't want to review a dupe for you guys. Um, for something that is very similar to a lot of what I already own. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. You can join me over on my Patreon because as you guys know, all funds from my Patreon are used to buy the supplies that I review here on the channel. So if there's something you really want to see, you can join me at patreon.com slash soup and let me know over there in the comments or on the community tab what you'd like to see me check out in the future. That is a great way to make sure that I review the stuff you're actually curious about. So I'm kind of on the fence about these. They are fine. They disappointed me in several ways. So I may have to get over that expectation versus reality disappointment, that gap there. Uh, to be able to fully enjoy them. They took more work and more scrubbing than some of the other supervision colors. So I'm really hesitant to recommend these to you guys. And I want to think about this a little bit more and talk about it more when I do the multi super granulating watercolor showdown, which brands I think are definitely worth trying out, which ones are worth trying out if you've got specific use cases or you're not necessarily going to be displaying your art a whole lot and which ones are just not worth your money and you should skip. So if you are not a subscriber, do me a big old favor and click that subscribe button. And even if you are a subscriber, make sure that you have the bell notification hit so that YouTube will actually let you know when I update the channel. And another way you can keep on top of everything that I release here is by following my Patreon. So that doesn't mean you have to support it. You don't have to spend anything to follow it, but you do need a Patreon account and it does need to be signed in. And then you click the follow button and it will send you my Patreon updates, which I share weekly. They're a combination of blog posts and works in progress and everything that went live that week. They'll send it to you in your email. And finally, if you don't wanna go that route, I do have a mailing list that I'm working on improving. I want to start getting more art out to you guys on a regular basis so that you're not going to miss it on social media. And that is at natasoup.com slash art nerds. So I'll see you guys again soon. I hope you had as much fun hanging out with me as I had hanging out with you guys. And hopefully this was helpful, useful, and informative and helpful in help. I'm going to say that word way too many times because I'm distracted by all the trucks. Um, Hopefully this was helpful in making, yeah. hopefully this was helpful in helping you guys make art habit. Bye guys.